muted. You need to unmute yourself if you're going to say something. Um, so if we start by coming uh, together in prayer. God, whose light shines in the darkness, shine on us today. God made known to those who met Jesus, touch us through the experiences of our lives. God, who gave Thomas what he asked, give us what we need, that we too may come to believe. Amen. And now we'll have our um, first hymn, which is a, a good rousing one. So you can sing your hearts up because nobody can hear you. Well, oh, let me. rather nice uh, poem from uh, this for this time of year from R.S. Thomas. Not the empty tomb but the uninhabited cross. Look long enough and you will see the arms put on leaves. Not a crown of thorns but a crown of flowers haloing it with a bird singing as though perched on paradise's threshold. We have overfurnished our faith. Our churches are as limousines in the procession towards heaven. But the verities remain. A denuclearized cross, uncontaminated by our coinage. The chalices ichor and one crumb of bread on the tongue for the bird-like intelligence to be made tame by. Thanks be to the God who embraces us, even in our times of greatest doubt. When our thinking is clouded and our spirit bewildered, God holds sacred space for us. Thanks be to the Son who accepts our questions without judgment. 
he who was questioned by pauper and priest alike, remains a touching place for us. Thanks be to the Holy Spirit, who guides us to answers in our day, the one who breathes God's understanding into us, opens a safe place for us. Amen. And now I'm going to invite uh, Julia to offer us our gospel reading. The reading is taken from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31, and I'm reading from the New International Version. Jesus appears to his disciples. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Jesus appears to Thomas. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. The purpose of John's gospel. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thank you, Julia. And we'll have our second uh, hymn now again, a, a lovely seasonal hymn. Uh, thank you.
somebody was having great fun on the organ there, weren't they? And I want to ask uh, Nia now to lead us in prayer. Thank you, Nia. Let us pray. Holy God, you have called us to follow in the way of your risen son and to care for those who are our companions, not only with words of comfort, but with acts of love. Seeking to be true friends of all, we offer our prayers to you. We pray for all those who are suffering from grief, illness or pain. Remember those who are oppressed and living in fear. We are grateful, Lord, for the easing of restrictions on our lives and pray for young people returning to their education this week. Guide us in the path of discipleship so that as you have blessed us, we may be a blessing to others, bringing the promise of the kingdom near by our words and actions. We will now recite the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Nia. And so today, I suppose inevitably with that uh, gospel passage, we, we think about, about Thomas today, about Thomas the doubter, Thomas the, the skeptic, Thomas the one who wanted to be convinced. Not that we'd ever be like that, would we? He wouldn't believe unless he saw and touched. Thomas, in some ways, ha has received rather a bad press, I suppose. Is he, in fact, though, any different from the other disciples? Is he different from Mary, who struggled to believe, even though Jesus stood right in front of her in the garden? Is he any different from Peter and John who couldn't believe, wouldn't believe, even when they saw the empty tomb and they'd heard from Jesus previously what was going to happen? I'd like us to think about faith and about where we meet Jesus. Because where we meet Jesus is where our faith can be built and can be increased. I'm sure that probably all of us know something of the kind of feelings that perhaps the disciples were experiencing. They're the feelings that come with grief. They're the feelings that come with loss or abandonment. They're feelings that are all too human and really, really common, of course. They're the feelings of, of stress, of being, of, of feeling overwhelmed or out of control, like we're being tossed about like a ship in a, a storm or, you know, by the winds of ill fortune. Feelings that come when we feel betrayed perhaps by our own bodies or minds or loved ones and there is little that is more difficult for us to cope with and I'm sure this last year probably more than any other time ever in recent history for sure has shown us how hard it is to have those feelings it's hard to know whether you're coming or going. It's hard to know 
what to do. It's it's even sometimes sometimes hard to hope because everything just feels so uh, dark and difficult. And that, for many, makes it hard to believe. Thomas was a man who would have been feeling all of those things, a huge loss. His friend has just been hung from a cross and left to die. The one he believed in, the one he hoped in, the one he trusted, the one he'd witnessed doing fantastic, amazing things, was crucified like a common criminal. Now, the disciples, we have to remember, had all left their families, of course, to be with Jesus, which in itself is quite a loss to have actually stepped out of that, that comfort. And Jesus uttered, as I said this morning too, words of hope before he died. Words that really will stay with us. But, you know, when you're alone, sometimes it can feel like a lot of words. Like a lot of words that you struggle with. What do, what do people do when, when we, we're, we're grieving? Either they say, I don't know what to say. Or they say, oh, I know exactly how you feel and use lots and lots and lots of words. And they, they're trying so hard, but we find it hard because expression of grief is tough, whether it's ours or we're, whether we're trying to meet somebody else in that, in that moment. But when we gather together with those who believe, when we meet with others who share our faith, and when we meet with others and share fellowship, it does become more than words, it becomes bigger. It becomes much more significant. You know that feeling when you meet somebody at your door or in a queue or anywhere really, and they are, without ever knowing it, often the answer to a prayer that you never even knew you'd uttered. You hadn't spoken it out, out loud. You possibly not even thought about it directly, but somehow they met a need in that moment in you. It happens a lot, actually. And those moments when somebody comes to you, uh, rings you up or turns up on your doorstep with a flower or, or, or anything, small things, for no other reason than that they felt a burden on their heart that they ha had to follow, but somehow you uh, had come into their minds and they give you hope and faith and they give you the strength to carry on, don't they? Blessed are you, Jesus said, when you have not seen and yet have come to believe. Blessed are we as well when we have seen and touched and when you're approached and you're touched by somebody. And blessed are we too when someone prays for us, when someone acts in faith for us, because it feels like what needs doing because somehow they've heard a still small voice they've listened to what's been laid on their hearts and they've responded in a what would seem on the face of it a small way but it makes such a huge difference to us in that moment we should never be afraid to reach out and touch someone physically or spiritually and that's what has made this last year so hard of course because we've not really been able to do that in a meaningful way as we'd we've been used to being able to do we should never be afraid to offer prayer or healing and we should never be afraid to share our faith and our hope 
I was once set an essay entitled, Faith is the Antithesis of Doubt, Discuss. It's just the sort of essay title you love to be given. <laughs> and it's not uncommon in theological colleges to get that sort of very short title that gives you a, 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 a pounding headache for quite a long time. It's not easy or clear cut as, as we might hope, because if we simply accept everything we're told or everything we read, we're likely to be confused at best. R.S. Thomas, who I read just now, wrote some extremely complex poetry. Um, but one of the things he said that I think was really easy, <laughs> relatively, was my faith, that frame of mind that lies somewhere between doubt and certainty. My faith, that frame of mind that lies somewhere between doubt and certainty. Jesus presented the marks of his love to his disciples so that they would believe and go out and do what he was wanting them and needing them to do. He showed them those marks, those marks of his love, so that the blessings that faith in him bring could become available to more people via those disciples and via us. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe, but blessed too are those who have seen, those who've seen the marks of Christ in us and have believed as a result. And blessed are we too, his people, who bear those marks, who bear those marks, who have fellowship with the Father and with his son, and we show it by our love, by our love for each other, by reaching out and touching and having hope and not being afraid. We need every day to thank the Lord for calling us together to be his people, to be his church, to be people who meet in his name, and to minister to one another by the power of his spirit. Let's praise God. Amen. And now we've got a lovely uh, piece of music. Thank, thank you, Bethan. The deep peace 
of Christ to each of you and to those you meet. And God's blessing, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us all and those we seek to love in his name. Amen.